You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 240. Hello, and welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture, hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. Have you ever thought or been taught that at any moment you could lose it all? That maybe your recent mistake could erase God's love for you or at the least call your salvation into question? Well, it's not a crazy question because it came up in our small group just this last week and in a recent conversation with a friend, and it's obviously not a crazy thought that only you have because it's not the first time it's come up, and Ryan Stevenson wrote a song about it. He calls it No Matter What, and before we dive into scripture, let's listen. I really want you to go and listen to the entire song because the chorus is a wonderful response to what I talked about in the open. The first verse starts out saying, a lot of us grew up believing at any moment we could lose it all and at the drop of a hat, God might turn his back and move on. A lot of us feel like we blew it thinking that we're just too far gone. And then it goes in to the chorus talking about no matter what, you can't erase the love or be separated from the Lord. And this song actually speaks to a pretty big question. And there are those who theologically disagree, people much smarter and more learned than I am. So I want to go to scripture for ourselves and see what we can discover there. Now, I like to study in large chunks of scripture, but I do understand that theology is built on the whole of scripture with a variety of of scriptural proofs and interpretation to put all the building blocks together of our faith. And one of my favorite resources for theology um, is Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem. It is a rather large book. It's a resource book. It really probably is not necessarily written to be read cover to cover. I guess it could be for sure. I actually use it as a resource by topic and I purchased the Kindle version so that I can easily search scriptures and key phrases and then it doesn't take up the space of three books on my bookshelf. So if you want to explore the topic of perseverance of the saints or answering the question of remaining a Christian, You can listen to a two-part audio presentation taught by Wayne Grudem himself. He taught it at the Scottsdale Bible Church, and they recorded his teaching, and they even provide a PDF outline that is made available on their website at christianessentialssbc.com. I will actually go ahead and link to not only that book resource that I talked about, but also it's a two-part audio series. I'm going to link to that in my show notes. You can find those show notes for this week's episode at michellekneesat.com forward slash 240. I actually take notes for you every week. You can always find the most recent episode there and a complete archive of all of the podcasts and show notes on my website. Now, we're going to be spending time in Colossians this week. Uh, and so the very first thing I want you to do is use the bite of reading in context. Now, bite stands for Bible interaction tool exercise and reading in context is my favorite bite. It really will help you as you study this idea that once you're his, no matter what, you can't be separated. And another bite I like to use, especially when I'm going to be interacting with an entire book of the Bible, is to read the envelope. Now, I got that phrase from another Bible teacher, but basically, you're reading a letter. This is a letter to the Colossians. And when you read a letter, before you even open it up, you read the envelope. Who's it from? Who's it to? When was it postmarked? And usually this is pretty easy, especially in the New Testament books that are actually letters. All you have to do normally is just read the first few verses. 
So Colossians verse chapter 1, verse 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. So the letters from Paul and Timothy, and it's to not just people from Colossae, but those described as God's holy people, also described as faithful brothers and sisters. So in other words, this letter is to believers. And in the case of this letter, when you read the whole thing through, you will actually discover it was intended to be passed on to other Christians in Laodicea. In chapter 4, verse 16, it says, after you've read this letter, pass it on to the church at Laodicea so they can read it too. And you should read the letter I wrote to them. I just think that's interesting. So what you can't get from merely reading the verses is the postmark date. And of course, of course, historians don't know exactly the date. It's not like it's March 16th of AD 60, but in the introductions I read, it said it was written sometime around 80, 60, or 61. So now that we've read the envelope, let's dive in. And I say, I prepared for the podcast. I use the bite of writing things out in my own words. I can't tell you the number of times I hear uh, people want to read their Bible. They pick it up and try to try to read it and then set it down again. Part of it, I think, is a, at least a couple of the people that have approached me recently. They just don't feel equipped. They don't feel smart enough to understand what they're reading. And I'm telling you right now, this is untrue. And there are some confusing parts. Don't get me wrong. But especially this letter, it's pretty easy to read and understand. It's going to lay some uh, amazing foundations to your faith. and But the key is to not just fly through it. All right. So we're going to use the bite of slowing down. One way that we slow down is to rewrite scripture using your own phrasing. Now, I'm not asking you to change scripture or add to it. I'm asking you to slow down, think about what you're reading, comprehend enough of what you read that you can restate it in your own words. Another way to slow down is to make observations. That's another bite and write those observations down. So let's get started. Verse three, chapter one, it says, we always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news and some versions say of the gospel. So my rewrite summary We're thankful because your faith and love are born out of hope of what eternity holds. Now, this confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven, it's an eternal hope. And it actually reminds me of the podcast I did recently on living hope in episode 238. So take everything you learned during that episode and apply it here. Same hope. Okay. But where do we normally place our hope? Well, in our circumstances and in our relationships. So our hope is in the recovery or in the intimacy or the next big thing. Don't place your hope in these things is what the scripture is saying. Think further out. Okay. And I also observed that the expectation for the Colossians and for us is a result of changed lives from the gospel. Let's keep reading verse six. This same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is faith, Christ's faithful servant, and he is helping us on your behalf. He told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So again, their hope is in eternity and has been ever since they received the truth of the gospel message. They first heard it and then understood it and received and embraced it, and it led to changed lives. So you'd think now that Paul and Timothy and the gang recognize that the Colossians have received this truth of the gospel, they're just going to throw a party and move on to the next convert. 
<laughs> no, keep reading. Verse 9, so we've not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. So there was no abandoning their new brothers and sisters in the Lord. There was work to be done. There were prayers to be lifted. And what did they pray for? That the Colossians would have complete knowledge of God's will and spiritual wisdom and understanding. Now, what does this prayer mean? This implies that new believers, while saved for eternity, don't automatically have these things. But we all need it. Right, This knowledge and wisdom and understanding, it affects the way we live. It is how we produce every kind of good fruit. I love the last phrase. It says, all the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. There's always to know more of him. He is infinite and he wants to be known. And so when we keep reading, uh, we, we see what else Paul and Timothy prayed for the Colossians. They keep praying. They keep adding in their prayers. Verse 11, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power. So you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. So one of the ways I write down my observations is I use the bite of making a list. I just see lists everywhere for some reason, and I see a list in these verses. I see a list of what they prayed for, that they would be strengthened with God's power. They would have endurance, patience, joy, gratefulness, and community. And all of this leads up to a final statement in verse 13. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. God rescued us from darkness and transferred us into his kingdom. Jesus himself purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. We've been rescued and transferred. I keep repeating it because I want you to hear that doesn't sound like something that God's going to go back on. Nor does it seem to have anything to do with us. Throughout scripture, we read that it was done despite of us. Okay, so we were rescued and we were transferred. This is not something that um, God's saying, uh, I'm going to renege on that deal, on that transfer. You got to go back to the old way of life. Now, the next five verses are really where it's at. And I'm not going to, we're on a particular topic here and I Uh, but I don't want you to miss it. I want you to spend more time here than anywhere else in your own personal study this week. Chapter one, verses 15 through 20, uh, because we're always so worried about us, but we really just need to focus on Jesus. And if we did that, everything else would fade away. The next five verses describe in great detail the supremacy of our Savior. It says Christ is is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones and kingdoms, rulers and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead. He is first in everything. Some translations say he is preeminent. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live with Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Again, Christ is, Christ is preeminent. He holds first place and has reconciled everything to himself. And in verse 21, it says, this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. So as believers, remember this was written to believers. 
We were once separated, but now we are reconciled. It doesn't say that we're reconciled because of something we've done. We're reconciled because of what Christ has done. We are not first. He is first. He is preeminent. And it also doesn't say it here. It says it in Ephesians. The good news is that it's by grace that we've been saved through faith. So as a result of God reconciling you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body, we are brought into his presence and made holy and blameless. This is justification, being declared innocent, not because we are innocent, but because the judge of the universe declares it so. So the next thing that comes up is our responsibility. And this is where I think people get tripped up. In verse 23, it says, But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. So what's our responsibility? Well, our responsibility is to continue to believe, to stand firmly, and to not drift There's a commitment to this whole Christ follower thing. I always try to encourage the folks in our community group. Hey, look, you're showing up. You're asking questions. You're reading God's word. You're getting to know God better and better, right? That's what the scripture says. Keep it up. Keep showing up. Continue to believe. Stand firmly. Don't drift. However, this is a relationship. And our broken relationship with God was reconciled through this death of his son. Christ's death made it right between an unholy people and a holy God. But this is a relationship. I didn't say to my husband, I told you I loved you at the altar. I'll let you know if I change my mind. Now, I got married at the altar, but I keep telling my husband I love him every day and show my love through my actions. There's evidence of my marriage to him and my love to him beyond the ring on my finger and my new last name. But so let's go back to the question of salvation. Does this salvation sound like something you could lose? Colossians 2, 13, we're going to jump to the next chapter. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins, all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. So the charges against me were canceled until I mess up again? No, they're canceled. We were dead and we've been made alive with Christ. So all of this is automatic? Everything that happens after that is automatic? No. Let's jump to chapter three. It says in verse one, since you've been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Remember, think further out where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So if we have to be told to set our sights and to train our thoughts, then that must mean that it's not automatic, but it takes an effort on our part. He goes on to say, put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. And in verse 10, he says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. You know, we've been given a new nature, but we have to continue to put it on. You've been positionally declared perfect in the sight of God because of Jesus, but we will make imperfect progress toward holiness for the rest of our earthly lives. No matter what, once you truly belong to him, you are his. But if you are his, you will stay his. This does not mean a perfect life, but one that is marked by fruit. Remember, evidence and imperfect progress, walking in newness of life and not returning to the life of death. And in the end, let's just say you're not sure. I love what our song says. There's never been a better time to get honest. There's never been a better time to get clean. So come as you are, run to the cross and be free. So if you're not sure, then confess. Take this moment right now. Get honest, get clean, confess and repent of your sins. Accept the free gift of salvation that Jesus is offering. Come as you are, run to the cross and be free and become his and then walk in that newness of life. So what's next? 
Well, I feel like I've left so much on the table with this rich letter to the Colossians. So I want you to read it for yourself. Read it several times. Read it with a pen in your hand, rewriting phrases, making lists, writing down observations. And if you've never repented unto salvation, do that today. But our lives should continue to be marked with repentance and renewal daily as we get to know him better and better each day. And while you're in God's word this week, let me know how you're doing. Email me, michelle at michellekneezat.com. You can hop on Twitter at Michelle Nizat or Instagram at Michelle Nizat or on Facebook, Michelle L. Nizat is my public page. Let's talk about what you're learning. Now, before I tell you what song will be featured next week, I want to thank the premier Christian music streaming service, theoverflow.com, for pointing their subscribers to this podcast, but more importantly, pointing them to God's word through music. Now, when you subscribe to their trial, you will receive a 10-day series of devotions I wrote based on some of my most popular podcast episodes. So I encourage you to check them out at theoverflow.com. And I want to thank my newest subscribers to my website, like Hollis from Texas, Annette from Illinois, Celeste from Pennsylvania, Carol from Washington, Tina from Illinois, Mandy from Louisiana, Diane from Tennessee, Cheyenne from Pennsylvania, and Wendy from the Philippines. Welcome. Now, new subscribers to my website will benefit from a one-page resource of my top five bites that I've used on the podcast. It's a great place to start. And subscribers will also benefit from an email that I send once a week. And in that email, you will get a weekly memory verse resource to display on your smartphone, desktop, tablet, or you can print it out. You'll also get an email recap of the week's episode, and you get instant access to any of the extra resources that I create for my episodes from time to time. All of that is just my way of saying thank you for listening. So head over to michellekneezat.com to subscribe today. Now, there are so many different ways to listen to the podcast now. We are now featured on Joy 103.1 every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, always on Spotify or through Stitcher Radio. And you can also subscribe in iTunes. And while you're in iTunes, would you leave me a written review and a star rating? This not only encourages me, but helps me stay visible to new listeners. And as always, if you take the time to review my podcast, I will take the time to personally thank you right here on the podcast. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Next week, I will be using Satisfied in You, Psalm 42, by The Sing Team to jump into scripture. If you liked this episode, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. With just one click, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Just head over to michellekneezat.com forward slash 240. While you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Click on comment to join the conversation. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.